Over the past few years, software engineering has made a lot of headlines as one of the highest paid professions in history, with especially the biggest companies in the industry like Google, Facebook and Nvidia grabbing headlines with their employees retiring as multi-millionaires after just a couple of years in the industry. And while software engineering is still one of the highest paid professions, I hate to break it to you, but learn to code in 2025 probably won't make you rich. What if I told you that despite the seemingly high salaries, a large number of software engineers are actually still quite poor. And as someone who used to work one of these software engineering jobs sort of towards the tail end of the tech boom, while most people think that a software engineering job is a safe ticket to a cushy lifestyle, it was anything but that for me and many of the people that I worked with. So today I wanted to dive deeper into this and give you the five reasons why learning to code will probably not make you rich despite the seemingly high tech compensation. But I won't just leave it at that. I will also tell you the three ways that you can stand out amongst your peer and live a very above average lifestyle as a software engineer. And I will tell you the one way in which coding, in fact, can make you rich, but it is just not the way that most people think. The first reason why learning the code probably won't make you rich is that in order to be a software engineer, at one of the highest paying companies, you have to live in one of the highest cost of living cities in the entire world. So you might very cushy six figure salary straight out of college, but your rent is going to be $4,000. Your groceries are going to be $2,000, other expenses, another $2,000. And suddenly after taxes, and by the way, these highest cost of living cities also tend to be the highest tax cities. Of the taxes, you realize that you don't actually have that much left over as you might have thought. I found this calculator online where you can essentially convert salaries in different cities to sort of take into account the cost of living differences. And we can see right here that an average salary of $100,000 in San Francisco is equivalent to 58,000 in a more normal city like Orlando in this example. Second reason why learning the code probably won't make you rich is that you live in the wrong country. Broadly, tech pays above average in almost any city and also in almost any country. But tech only pays especially high in just two to three countries. And people don't realize this. When I told one of my friends how much I was making as a software engineer in London in the UK, he was shocked just how low my salary was. Just to show you right here, for example, we have developer compensation by country and we can see just how drastic these differences are. We have the United States, which is by far the top one where the top range can go up to like $200,000. But the second best country is Switzerland, where it only goes up to like $150,000. And really this drops off quite quickly. In even other like developed countries like Europe, UK, the salaries for most software engineers are not that high. Now again, of course, it is above average for that market, but still, if you actually run the numbers, and by the way, I have run the numbers, in US, Switzerland, Israel, a couple of these top countries, despite the fact that the cost of living in those countries is also much more expensive, you're still overall net-net much better off than you are in the UK or Europe. The third reason why learning the code probably won't make you rich is inflation. So everyone has felt this in pretty much any country you live in, but this has been especially bad in a lot of these Western countries that most people who watch this channel and who are getting into tech are from. The economy, as a result of the pandemic, interest rates went up and there was a very big slowdown in the market. A lot less companies are coming up because getting funding is more difficult, borrowing money is more expensive, which has resulted in a massive downturn in the amount of jobs which in turn has resulted a lot of people to just not be able to get a job and the jobs that do exist have been reduced in compensation. All the while, cost of living across the board has gone up massively. So while your salary numbers might still be high, cost of living has gone up so much that this is another reason why these salaries might not go as far as you might imagine. This is why a lot of software engineers these days are living paycheck to paycheck because the costs have gone up way faster than the salaries. But there is another kind of inflation that is almost more dangerous than this one, and that is reason number four, why you probably won't get rich by learning the code, which is lifestyle inflation. Now, it's sort of a psychological fact 
amongst humans that when you make more, you also tend to spend more. Why do you do that? Because especially are in this industry where everyone seems to be making money and everyone else is spending money on new phone, traveling, a nicer apartment, a nicer car, all these kind of things. You get into this situation where you feel like you have to keep up with the people around you. So while these other factors are sort of outside of your control in the short term, this one is actually entirely within your control. But most people just don't have any financial discipline. You end up spending all of your salary, which means that while you might be able to afford a pretty decent lifestyle, you don't actually end up getting rich because all of the money that you make, you simply spend, which doesn't lead to you saving money and building wealth. Remember, being rich isn't about how much you make, it is about how much you keep and how much you accumulate over time. This is why I'm such a big advocate of people, first of all, working remotely from more affordable locations where you can live a comfortable lifestyle while still being able to put money aside, invest and build wealth over time. And the more drastic example of this, which is what I have done, is working remotely globally. So you not only move within your country, but you move to a cheaper cost of living location in the world entirely, where actually you'd be surprised the kind of lifestyle you can live at a very, very affordable price. And if you manage to keep your Western standard income, you can really build wealth very, very quickly while maintaining a very, very nice lifestyle. Now, all of this has sort of gradually made it more difficult for you to save money and get rich with coding, but the real reason why people were getting rich with coding in the first place was something a bit different that most people might not realize. So the fifth reason why you probably won't get rich by learning the code is the decline in stock compensation. So the real reason why engineers at Nvidia, for example, are retiring as high multimillionaires after just a couple of years of working at a company is due to the nature in which tech employees have historically been compensated. And that is that your total compensation is not just cash that they pay to you as a salary. Crucially, a big portion of that compensation is often stock compensation. In the past 10, 20 years, in the boom years of the tank industry, all of the stocks of these big tech companies that these engineers were working at, Facebook, Google, Netflix, Nvidia, have been absolutely skyrocketing. So if you have been working at these companies and getting more and more stock as part of your compensation every single year, you have been getting filthy rich because all the stock that you're receiving is simply going up. But there's two reasons why the era of people getting rich because of this stock compensation is sort of over. Number one reason is that these companies have been reducing the stock compensation significantly and they've sort of been doing it sneakily, where essentially the total compensation packages that they advertise are still very similar in number, but the way you can sort of redeem these stocks and like sell them and things like this have been made significantly worse, like the sort of small print of these deals has been made significantly worse. And I made a full video on this on the channel that you can check out for all of the details. But essentially the TLDR is that stock compensation has been going down. The second reason is that I simply don't think that these stocks will keep appreciating at the same rate as they were before. It is natural that when Facebook, Google, Netflix were becoming the new big things, these stocks were growing like crazy. But now these companies have sort of reached their saturation points. I mean, there's only so many people in the world that Facebook can get as their users, that Google can get to use YouTube and their different services. So once you reach a point where pretty much the entire world is using these companies already, there's not that much room for them to grow anymore. If you wanted to get rich in the way that the early Google and Facebook engineers were getting rich, you would need to find the next Facebook, the next Google. And that is obviously going to be difficult because no one can predict the future. So just by working at these companies, while well, again, you can still earn way above average. And if you don't fall into lifestyle inflation, you can live an above average life and build nice wealth. You won't get rich in the same way as the earlier employees that these companies did. So like I said, I just, just wanna leave you with these problems. I also wanna give you the solution. What can you do to make sure that you're building as much wealth as possible with your software engineering salary? The number one way is to switch jobs. I made a more detailed video on this before, but the TLDR is that it has been shown that just by switching jobs every two to three years, people can increase their salaries much, much more quickly than by staying at the same company. We can see right here, on average job hoppers, received two times as many raises than tenured employees. And this is by almost a factor of two. 
from 35% to 18%. The second way to build financial security with coding is to control your lifestyle. Now, this is out of all of those factors that we considered before, the one thing that you can really control. Again, this means that you are not gonna be buying the nicest cars, you're not gonna be buying all the new tech straight away. You're going to have some sort of a percentage that you're going to keep saving and investing no matter what. You can do this with pretty much any salary because you'd be surprised how much you can actually reduce your cost if you really, really try. The third way to build wealth with coding is to work remotely. I've been saying this for a long time, but the biggest hack that exists in the modern world is to earn money in one of the stronger economies but live in one of the weaker economies. A big example is earning money from the US, whether by having a remote business or a remote job or a freelancing job in the US Europe markets, but then personally living in, for example, Southeast Asia, where I spend half of the year myself. And people will think like, oh, I'm gonna have to sacrifice so much. These countries are absolute dumps. Why would I wanna live there? But if you actually spend time there, you'll be surprised how modern, how safe, how interesting a lot of these cheaper countries can be. And you'll probably find that the lifestyle you have there is better than the one that you have in your Western country. Now, obviously the difficult part here is being able to actually go to those countries while maintaining your Western standard income. So I'm not gonna lie that this is gonna be easy, but if you do manage to do that, then this is really the hack that you can use to build wealth while living a nice lifestyle and not really having to sacrifice on that many things. But the real way, that you're gonna actually be able to get rich with coding is not to work a job at all. It was always sort of like this in almost any other industry. You can work a job in one of the higher paying industries to live an above average lifestyle, build above average wealth, but to really get rich, working a job was really never the way. The way you really get rich is not by working a job, is by building a business yourself. And I understand this is not for everyone, but it just sort of has to be said, we were in this anomaly situation where these high growth tech companies were awarding stock and using that stock, like you essentially became a part business owner in these companies. And that was a real reason why people were getting so rich by working these software engineering jobs. Now that this sort of loophole, you may call it, is closing down, which is sort of going back down to reality, where by working a tech job, which is still a high demand job, you can live an above average life, build above average wealth, but to really get rich, you need to take risk. And that means starting a business and coding is one of the best skills that you can learn to start a business. What I would recommend for most people who are really ambitious is do get your job, but use that as a stepping stone. Use that as sort of security to take care of your bills, but then on your spare time, start building things, start trying out new projects, especially today with AI, it is more possible than ever for you to build a business literally solo. In any case, Coding is changing a lot. I go into more detail on exactly how coding is changing and what you absolutely need to be aware of in this new era of coding in this video. So I highly recommend you watch this video next and I will see you in the next one.